All right, Gogo, here's the mini review. It's uh, all the boring stuff before I turn the thing on. Um, unfortunately, that little bit of string doesn't come standard. That's custom. But uh, it's a heavy little light, about 500 gram. I reckon get up to 8,000 lumen. But to get those 8,000 lumens, you're going to have to use uh, hard, like very high quality batteries. With the batteries that come standard, they're still supposed to be pretty good. Uh, but you'd only get up to about 6,000 lumens on that, which is still bloody bright. Um, all runs off this one switch. And so you got to press it, hold it, click, click, click it, do all these weird things. But standard operation, you just turn it on and then ramp it up or down. That's ramping down and hold it again and it'll ramp back up. And it'll remember the last setting you had it on. So I turn it off and then turn it on. It remembers the last setting. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit annoying to set up because it's um, because everything has, there's thousands of modes on it, but everything has to be done via clicks. And the manuals are a bit of a bastard to understand because they don't let you know why the torch is behaving as it does when you do these clicks, like lights are flashing, there's a freaking, like a freaking disco is going on. Um, but yeah, the all important light test is probably all you're interested in, but they're a budget sort of brand for this style of torch. Like you could pay 400 bucks for this style of torch. These ones are about 90 on Amazon, uh, but they come with batteries, the charger. So it's all rechargeable. They take about four and a half hours to recharge through this little USB port here. And depending, because it's got so many different modes, the amount of time it lasts for is all dependent on how high your modes are. Um, but yeah, so far I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we'll see if the batteries hold up and if the uh, torch lasts. The, the only, the, the big shocker is though, because it says it's an 8,000 lumen torch, you think you can, you can run it on 8,000 lumens the whole time. You won't be able to though. 8,000 is a turbo boost. And these things heat up like a bloody uh, hot coal in the barbie. And that means that it, it's got internal sensors that'll go, all right, you're getting way too hot. And so it'll dim the light automatically and you won't be able to control that. So yeah, they've got to turn it off and let it cool down or just deal with the diminished light. But I ran it on the second highest setting last night and that lasted, you know, half an hour. I didn't even show... Well, it warmed up, but it didn't warm up to where the sensors were going to kick in. Um, so you can get, that's probably, a, I think it says in the um, manual, that's about 2,000 lumens of constant light. And then you just use the turbo, the 8,000 lumens, just to highlight stuff. Like say you see a yabby 25 metres that way and you're not really sure, well, you can just get hit him with the turbo and it'll, uh, it'll light him up. Um, but yeah, that's it so far. And you'll see how it lights up tonight. Yeah, they say it's an IPX8 rated torch, which means you can, according to industry standards, that means that you can submerge it up to a depth of two meters indefinitely and it won't stuff up. But it all hinges on this uh, rubber, rubber seal, on the rubber seal covering that port. So that just flicks back and you press him in um so yeah people were surprised when they found out it had an ipx8 rating when that was the port cover um and the, the actual the manufacturers of this torch even though it's ipx8 they don't recommend it as a dive torch that could just be because people will go past two meters with it but um yeah so it's got it's got that going for it a lot of guys i asked how to cool the thing down uh, if it gets too hot and guys reckon they've chucked them in snow banks, uh, dunk them underwater, and you know, no, no problems at all. They reckon they've done it hundreds of times and it can handle that. Because I was worried about the glass cracking. Uh, and they're like, mate, if it can handle being boiling hot and then thrown into snow, that tempered glass will, will probably look after you. Um, the other thing is, it's not a focusable beam. They refer to it as a like a bit of a hybrid of, they refer to it as a thrower, which means you'll, you'll spot things very far away because it's got a tight beam, but it's also got a good bit of flood to it for in close. Um, 
so you've got this pointy beam running straight through the middle of a big cloud of light um but yeah not having a focusable beam i thought i thought ah oh, what are you doing larry you idiot what are you buying a non-focusable beam for but this thing's got a quite quite a tight beam it's as tight as my led lenser on full tight focus so it actually as just a stroke of luck fits in perfectly with uh the way i use well what i'm used to so that was actually a bloody nice surprise um and the problem with testing these lights around melbourne is everywhere so bloody well lit like i was up at dyke's falls the other day and the cloud cover was acting like a bloody like a dim light i could bloody almost see colors out there um so if you're out in the sticks somewhere this thing would be much more impressive um but still very impressive even with all the ambient light that you have around melbourne um, but you will see that tonight <laughs>